Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're going to focus in a little bit more on really recovering from a covert narcissist uh, relationship. I've had a number of viewers who have sent me an inquiry um, that they have been in a relationship with a covert narcissist individual, someone who kind of breaks away, someone who essentially abandons them, someone who escapes emotionally and they're feeling emotionally deprived or like there's a void in the relationship. They're really um, exhausted from working too hard and feeling like they're not getting what they deserve in return. And I want to focus in really on the issue of covert narcissist manipulation and what it takes to really recover from it. When we realize uh, and we look at the covert narcissist, it's a very sort of introverted narcissism. In other words, there's a heightened or excessive presence of self-importance that tends to pervade and override in the relationship. It tends to really uh, create a sort of envi environment that this individual, because of their ego, uh, the ego becomes large in the relationship and it becomes really just by their presence or what is not spoken, what is assumed and what is someone is it, um, uh, supposed to accept about them. And the word that I'm um, looking for is, it's a, it's a sense of entitlement. In other words, it's something that you can't speak up or confront with this individual. It's something you just have to accept. You have to silently and passively accept that this person, because of their ego, deserves to be the superior one in the relationship, the uh, one who's attended to, that their needs are more important in the relationship than giving voice to your needs, your feelings, really kind of what I call your heart space. So this ego becomes almost a silent presence. It becomes something which you observe and are um, expected to automatically defer to. And defer to means to basically humble yourself uh, to or sacrifice yourself to. And yes, there's a lot of that um, uh, really inherent respect that is important in relationships. But when it comes to covert narcissism, there's a very subtle, pervasive, indistinguishable sense of uh, superiority about their ego. In other words, you're expected to just sub sub be submissive, to be docile, to be less than, to take a back seat, to be smaller than, to be less important than. So this is kind of an air of assumption that is created in the covert narcissist relationship. So this becomes, of course, very stifling and very painful and needs to be attended to in the relationship. And this ego uh, that you've in inadvertently been um, serving or submissive to really has taken oftentimes a lot out of you and, and leaves you feeling less than or feeling like you're missing something in life and like you're kind of separate from this individual. You don't feel a real connection. And this void or this chasm um, that you feel this separation, like you're really, you're kind of there but not really connected, is because there is so much of this ego. And the ego um, from this person keeps them separate from really almost anyone and anything in their relation, in, in their environment, or really even in their life. They have this air of superiority and um, entitlement that requires this sort of bow down to sort of treatment. In other words, you're expected to, regardless of how they've treated you or not treated you, um, you're expected to <clears throat> just to automatically um, keep them in this superior ego state. And oftentimes it's contradictory to what they have done, um, how they have been there for you, um, satisfied your needs, acknowledged your needs, and you're expected to just you know, passively accept this behavior and not confront it, not deal with it, just, you know, continue to feel so meek, to feel so weak around or feeling like something is missing oftentimes, but not really having the words to describe it. And so if you have felt this separation or this gap or feeling like there's this lack of clarity in the relationship or there's not a heart to heart connection and you feel uh, like you really need to figure this out and have that aha moment and understand really what is occurring, realize that oftentimes it is oftentimes because the ego causes that separation. If someone constantly feels better than, they're not going to connect with others in an authentic way. 
if they're coming from that ego, that superficial space where really they're they're expecting uh, this treatment without um, um, without due behavior or treatment of others. In other words, they're just expecting you to defer to them as the superior one without, you know, it's almost like based on title, contrary to how they have uh, treated you. So this separation that you feel is because of that ego presence that is enlarged or emphasized and there's really a lack of heart. They c can very much be, you know, have, you know, a, a lovingness or, you know, been there for you. It's not saying that they don't have a heart. But the covert narcissist, oftentimes, you don't really get a chance to see their heart. You don't get a chance to really know their heart. You don't get a chance to feel it. And so you, you know, become, uh, you really need to become more heart-centered in your, in your, in your life and within yourself. So let's just take a moment, um, become very heart-centered. Your heart is really kind of the center of your being. It's where all the chatter shuts down. Um, the mind, um, if you're all, you know, too caught up in the mind, uh, which is the ego, um, which is, you know, trying to project, trying to anticipate, trying to determine, um, really trying to, you know, figure out what I did wrong or what I need to do right. It's a lot of this analysis that goes on. Oftentimes that's the chatter, what they call the monkey brain of the ego. And if you've been giving that undue importance or um, weight in the relationship, and it's, you know, you've been coming from that ego space, that superficial um, ego space versus the heart-centered space, especially if you've been in a relationship with them for a long time, <clears throat> you're going to feel essentially like you want something more. There's something missing. You're feeling a separation. You're not able to connect. And it's because you're not in that heart space. So take a moment and really just get into that heart space where you really have... Um, that feeling of warmth and connection and like you're just kind of coming into your body. And you can just kind of breathe into it and just attune to your heart, which is really kind of a, a more softer, warmer feeling. It's It can be almost a, a place of silence or quietude or solace. Or, you know, a lot of people sometimes they feel alone and they feel isolated if they're not kind of caught up in that mind. So you need to come back into that heart space. And really begin to live there a little bit more. Call it into your conscious awareness. And say, I really need to come more into my heart space in this relationship. I am now coming more into my heart space in this relationship. And I forgive myself for being uh, so negligent or um, being so busy and frantic and hectic in my life to really... Um, ignore my own heart space and my really what my own heart desires and what my own heart is trying to speak to me and give that some attention give them that some value give that some importance come back into that heart space allow yourself to be there because your heart has such a, a profound uh, um, electronic field around it the mind tends to you know uh, chatter and judge and can destroy oftentimes the heart so you need to have that balance and connection. So if things have become too ego-based, too superficial, um, too much like you're trying to please uh, this, um, this covert narcissist, or you're really kind of coming at the precipice of where you need to make a change in your relationship or your life, and you're like, this is not working. You're really coming to the point where you're not laughing anymore. You're not smiling. You're not feeling good about life. You're you're feeling really, you know, degraded. You're feeling like something is missing and it's just feeling very empty. Chances are you're missing that heart center and you have um, maybe just, you know, ignored that for too long. So call it into being, call it into your awareness. And for each person, it's a unique and private um, thing. And so it's something that you truly, you know, it's something who you truly are, what you truly feel. And if you have kind of skirted over this or, um, you know, ignored it or just been too busy to attend to your heart and you're too much, you know, caught up in that and your, your life is becoming imbalanced or way um, too much in that ego, which is about the people pleasing and taking care of people and it can cause you to over obligate to people and become kind of like a false self in reaction to it. Come back to your real self, your true self, your authentic self, which is the seat of your heart, really the, the center of your heart. And then just say, I'm now really having a heart-centered existence and I'm now humble enough 
to live in that. And I don't need to um, go back and deflect into the ego and start se serving and feeding this person's ego anymore because that's not good for me and it's not good for this individual. I'm, I'm now ceasing in that behavior. And come back into that and call into that and find what the individual voice of your own heart is saying to you. What is your heart saying to you right now? What is it calling you to do? What is it calling you to be? Is it just calling you to slow down a bit? Is it calling you to um, laugh a little bit? Is it calling you to just go out and to be and stop trying to prove yourself, trying to prove yourself to this other individual? Um, are you getting too much caught up into that? Um, come back into your heart space. Give that a chance to value and give yourself you know, that importance and stop giving into that ego, that anxiety that's causing you all this disturbance hecticness, chaos, and franticness, and all these other symptoms that can go with too much living in that ego space. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.